Hello, welcome to PlayStation Access. My name's Rob, and I'm the poor guy who's been tasked with compiling a list of our favourite JRPGs for you all to disagree with. Honestly, you should have seen our Zoom meeting where we were just trying to decide what a JRPG is. It's so simple. JRPG. Yeah, it's, 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 it's made in Japan, it's, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, pretty much. That's, what is the J for if not Japan? But it's, that's where it's it Japanese, it's more isn't of a stylistic it? thing. It's not, no, it's just, not stylistic. Yeah, it's stylistic. It's, it's, it's a made in Japan. It's really? a stylistic it's, thing. Have, you can have a JRPG that's made in America. If it's Japan, Japan is not a style, Rob. It's a place. No, it's not a place. It's not a place. It's not a place. Oh, my God. Everyone knows that. Japan. Oh, my God. A JRPG is any RPG made in Japan, right? Well, no. Dark Souls is an RPG made in Japan, but you wouldn't call that a JRPG, would you? It's simple. Again, I don't know why you struggle with this. Is it an RPG? Yes. yes. Was it made in Japan? Yes. yes. What so is it's it? a JRPG. Oh my god. It's obviously Japanese. The JRPG. Yeah, you can ask anyone. Everyone will say it's a JRPG. Everyone knows this. Dark Souls is like the definition of JRPG. Look, I'm deciding. Dark Souls is not a JRPG. A JRPG is a subgenre of role playing game. There's a style to them, both aesthetically and mechanically, that sets them apart from other RPGs. RPGs. Fantasy settings, tactical turn-based battles, a party of characters with specialist roles. That's what a JRPG is, and these are ten of our favourites in no particular order and keeping to one game per series, otherwise I'd quite happily fill this video with at least seven Final Fantasy games. OK, here we go. So, entry number one. Remember how we were just arguing about what a JRPG actually is? Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch Remastered is the definition of the genre, as far as I'm concerned. It's got all the ingredients you'd expect, yet somehow combines them into a game that's at once comfortingly familiar and yet also fresh and unique. It's got a story that will gently pluck your heartstrings like a delicate harpist before smashing the entire instrument like an angry rock star. We won't spoil it for those who are yet to experience Nino Kuni, but let's just say it won't be long before the story of young Oliver and his talking Welsh beanbag will have you bawling your eyes out and then, moments later, lift you into role-playing heaven as you escape into a world that feels as though it's fallen right out of a fairy tale. We should mention the involvement of animation powerhouse Studio Ghibli here. The music and arts direction of Nino Kuni will be immediately familiar to fans of Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, Howl's Moving Castle and the like, which, combined with the JRPG expertise of developer level 5, makes for a truly irresistible package. This is exactly what a JRPG should be. Beautiful, huge, dark and funny. A game that swoops effortlessly between gut-punching grief and feeding cute little monsters chocolate bars to improve their stats. And then when you've finished Wrath of the White Witch, you can play the equally brilliant Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom as well, because as proven by Mighty here with his sugary stat boosters, when it comes to JRPGs, you cannot have too much of a good thing. Next, we've got Tales of Berseria, the latest instalment in a JRPG series that now has even more mainline entries than Final Fantasy. Yes, that is possible. I've chosen Berseria for this list because I particularly like how main character Velvet gets emotionally annihilated not once but twice within the opening hour of the game. And when I say I like, what I actually mean is I enjoy the white-hot anger instilled in the player at the game's aggressors, reflected in Velvet's descent, or ascent if you like, from humble start of a JRPG level 1 villager to vengeful badass with an arm that eats demons. Her entire village is destroyed in the opening cutscene, then her brother is brutally sacrificed in some kind of horrific ritual. Remember, we're one hour into the game here. Cue an epic quest for revenge, underpinned by a ferociously paced modern day battle system. Another thing the Tales series does that I really enjoy, skits. Lovely snippets of character dialogue that add richness, humour and narrative depth to the journey. Do all JRPGs have people dying at the beginning then? They certainly have me dying. Huh? 
dying to play them. <laughs> <laughs> you are spoiling us, PS4. Dragon Quest XI is next, the latest entry in a series that can only be described as JRPG royalty. And this game really does feel like luxury from start to finish. Beautiful visuals, a vibrant world practically begging to be explored, a battle system that's beautifully simple and also moorishly deep, and a story about a village nobody who turns out to be the Chosen One. If you're watching this video as someone who's never played a JRPG before and are looking for a good place to start, you really can't go wrong here. Don't be scared off by the 11 in the title either. This is a completely self-contained story and requires no prior knowledge of Dragon Quests 1 to 10. All you need to know is they are amazing, and yes, these characters and monsters are designed by Akira Dragon Ball Toriyama, if you were wondering why the hero looks ready to go Super Saiyan at any moment. There's even a popular urban myth surrounding Dragon Quest that so many people bunk off work and school in Japan when a new Dragon Quest game comes out that they now have to be released at weekends so as to avoid a slump in the economy. We in no way advocate pulling a sickie to play video games. Just do what I do and book an entire month's holiday instead. You've got to love video games at the moment, haven't you? They are just constantly giving us what we want all the time. I mean, check this out. Hello, video games? Yes? We never got Trials of Mana in the UK. Can we have it on PS4, please? Yes? But not just as it was, can you remake it from the ground up so it looks and plays just like a modern game? Of course. One moment, please. Let me just add some graphics there. Some real-time combat here. Amazing. Thanks, video games. This is Trials of Mana, a PS4 reimagining of a JRPG classic that previously only saw the light of day in Japan. Again, this is pretty much everything you'd want from a JRPG. Why were we confused by this again? A lovable group of heroic rogues in outlandish costumes, a seemingly all-powerful villain who won't be laughing by the time we've all ground our way to level 50, and visuals more colourful than a swearing rainbow. This is my happy place. Let it be yours too. You will not regret it. I will defeat you. Okay, entry 5, Persona 5 Royal. Now, we're not ranking anything in these lists. I'm not here to tell you this game is better than that game. You know, we're just sharing our genre favourites. But Persona 5 Royal is kind of the best JRPG ever made. If looking at Metacritic League tables is your thing, and it's very much my thing, I love numbers, you'll notice Persona 5 Royal is up there with the most critically acclaimed games of this entire generation. And for good reason, this is a game where every single element, from the post-battle EXP screen to just navigating the menu, feels almost stupidly cool. And I don't know how Atlas has pulled this off, but Persona 5's style and grace seems effortless, which is mad when you think about how much work must have gone into making the game seamlessly transition from end of battle screen back to dungeon exploration without so much as a please wait time loading. And it's not just that Persona 5 has the coolest battle system, or the smoothest music, or the most lovable characters, or a gripping story, and it does have all of those things. What really sets Persona 5 apart from the rest is its ability to turn what on paper sound like the most mundane of tasks, making coffee, hanging out after school, into activities you actually enjoy. I mean, maybe it's because you get a fun, happy graphic and a stats boost when you partake. Maybe if real life was gamified in such a way, I'd get more excited about those boring everyday things. Valkyria Chronicles 4 is a game you've probably heard of but haven't played, because it doesn't have a hero with a massive sword and a sexy villain who can throw buildings, you're like, ah, I won't risk it, I'll stick with my turn-based big blade tower lobbing comfort zone, you know, something safe. Well, we're here to tell you not to be safe. Stick your head out from behind the cover of that game you've already played 23 times and dash into the best alternate reality World War II strategy RPG there is. 
Also, the only alternate reality World War II strategy RPG there is, I think. But please just listen, Valkyria Chronicles is magic. The original game is even remastered on PS4 now if you want to start there before diving into number 4, but what you'll get is something unlike anything you've ever played. You know, it's like, I don't know, an anime World War II XCOM. If you're down with the manga visuals, and I'm guessing you are, you're watching a video about JRPGs, and fancy a way of exploring the rusty tanks and muddy fields of World War II without having to stare at them down the scope of a first-person assault rifle, then get involved. You'll be hooked on this battle system. For lovers of turn-based strategy, it's really something special, and the story and characters will no doubt capture your heart as well. Okay, Kingdom Hearts 3 is next on our list, which in contrast to Dragon Quest XI and Nino Kuni, is not a game you should be playing without prior knowledge of everything that's happened before. If that's you, then I'd substitute this entry for Kingdom Hearts All in One, which is basically everything, all the games in one big bundle. It's going to be quite the journey, good luck. But if, like me, you are a massive Kingdom Hearts fan, then Kingdom Hearts 3 is one heck of a send-off for Sora and Co. I remember just having a massive grin on my face for almost the entirety of my 50-hour playthrough. I say almost because there were some moments where I was doing proper ugly crying at all the emotional bits, but for most of its runtime, Kingdom Hearts 3 is just so joyful. I mean, what other game lets you take a selfie with Donald Duck and Goofy in the beautiful world of Tangled? <laughs> And then moments later, has you bouncing around Andy's room from Toy Story with Woody and the gang. It's Disney magic laced with gloriously over-the-top climactic anime showdowns. And I am here for it. Just don't ask me to explain the plot to you, okay? Something else you shouldn't ask me to explain. Is Monster Hunter World a JRPG? I mean... The battles are action-based and real-time. There isn't a big party of rebellious, trendy teenagers, one of whom's an orphan and one of whom dies. Um, but it is a game about running through a lush open world, smacking ludicrously big monsters with massive hammers. So here it is on the list. Shut up, you're not my mum. Anyway, Monster Hunter World is special for more than just its gorgeous visuals and epic scraps against definitely not T-Rexes. This was the Monster Hunter that turned around, saw the poor people who'd never played a Monster Hunter game before, and said to them, Come with me, we'll make this easy for you. Well, not easy, easy, don't be silly, you're a human and these are 30-foot reptilian tanks with teeth. But easy in the sense you don't have to have played any other Monster Hunter games to get on board. Easy in the sense you can team up with friends online and hunt together. Easy in the sense that the world is so sprawling you can just run away like a pathetic coward if things start getting a bit hairy or scaly or feathery. Everything else aside, this is the main draw. These incredible environments teeming with life and unpredictability, where battles can spill into valleys and rivers and the nests of other monsters. JRPG or not, and I'm saying it is. Oh, so now, oh, for God's sake, what are you just talking, talking about, Donald bro? Isn't God, God. It's basically One thing you can't argue is that Monster Hunter World is absolutely essential. Our penultimate entry is another one likely to cause some debate about the legitimacy of its JRPG-ness, but given the heritage of Nier Automata with its elaborate family tree that includes the cult classic Drakengard series, and also given the fact it's just brilliant, it's getting on this list. Nier Automata is an action JRPG. Developer Platinum Games do flashy sword fighting better than anyone else, and their combat systems are sharper than sense just ask the trees in Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. But with Nier Automata comes a depth of story and a wideness of open world that combines the narrative clout of the very best role players with the slick real-time immediacy of a Bayonetta or a Vanquish. That's quite a cocktail even before you add the layered emotionally fraught story and memorable cast of characters that for some reason share names with my pencil set from year 7 art class. <laughs> To me! We better finish this quick! 
The best thing you can do is not question why this is, or why they're blindfolded, or what this is, or why there's that who, what, when, and just play the game because it's really brilliant, okay? It's the last entry on a JRPG list feature and we haven't included Final Fantasy yet. I died a bit inside at the thought of only including one game from the series, so here's a quick rollout of honourable mentions you should definitely play, and isn't me artificially adding more games to this video, absolutely not. Anyway, Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII Remastered, Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy X and X2 HD Remaster, Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age, Final Fantasy XIV and Final Fantasy XV are all brilliant on PS4 and wonderful JRP. Jeez. But the one that gets on this list is Final Fantasy VII Remake, an obscenely accomplished reimagining of my favourite game of all time. Final Fantasy VII Remake is magic for fans of the original, seeing all these characters and explosive story beats glowing with new life. But the amazing thing is, for people who've never played a Final Fantasy game before, it's simply a brilliant story with wonderful characters and a battle system that is, in my opinion, the most spectacular fusion of real-time action and turn-based strategy ever conceived. Every boss fight in Final Fantasy VII Remake is like a multi-act stage play. It's never just, here's a boss, here's a room, win. Like, they hop on the walls, chuck waves of sewage at you, and in one instance, smash into an entirely different area and fight a separate chunk of your party. The original Final Fantasy VII made Japanese role-playing games mainstream. I genuinely believe Remake could light the fuse on the JRPG rocket once again. It's essential, simply put. If you own a PS4, you have to play it. Phew, there you go, 10 of our favourite JRPGs on PS4. Do you agree? Have any others you think should have made the cut? Let us know in the comments, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and click that notification bell to stay up to date with everything from the world of PlayStation. For the players.